everyone. Welcome to the second part of the 27th lecture in the series Mathematical Methods for Economics. We are discussing economic applications uh, on uh, implicit uh, with the implicit differentiation technique. And in the first part of uh, the video, I took up an example from microeconomics and we partic in particular, we looked at a per unit tax on the consumers of a good and uh, we saw how, uh, what implications that would have in terms of the price received by the producer or the price paid by the consumer. And uh, in this part of the video, I will uh, take you to some uh, economic applications from macroeconomics. We'll in particular look at uh, a, a, a macroeconomic model for determining national income in a closed economy framework as well as an open economy framework. We'll also discuss uh, the uh, concept of a total differential because very often we calculate derivatives using total differentials and uh, it is a good idea at this point to understand uh, what a total differential uh, means and how we use that to find our derivatives. But before I start with the macroeconomic models, I would like to give you an exercise. So, uh, in the first part of the video, I had talked about a situation where a per unit tax of uh, T was imposed on the consumers of a good for each unit that they purchased. So, uh, we looked at the uh, implications there. Now, what you can do is you can do a similar kind of analysis where a tax of T per unit is imposed on the producers of a good. And uh, you will see there that in that case, the demand function would uh, be given by A minus B times a price. But now, because uh, the tax is imposed on the producers, this is like an additional cost for the producer. So, for the producer, uh, because the producer has to pay the tax, for every uh, price P that the producer receives from the consumer, T will go to the government and effectively the producer receives P minus T. So, it is a supply curve which will get affected and it will shift up and to the left so that the new supply curve is given by alpha plus beta times P minus T. So, you can uh, analyze this uh, particular case on your own and uh, you will see in the end uh, that actually it does not matter who pays the tax, whether it is a consumer or the producer of a good, both lead to a situation where the tax burden is shared here uh, between the producers and the consumers and uh, this is for the case where you have a downward sloping demand curve and an upward sloping supply curve. Okay, so uh, let's move on to uh, next, let's move on next to a macroeconomic model for determining national income in a closed economy. So, national income here is represented by Y and it goes into consumption or investment. So, we have Y equal to C plus I. C here represents a private consumption expenditure and C is a function of Y. Uh, F prime of Y, which tells us how consumption changes with respect to income, that represents a marginal propensity to consume as you must have studied in macroeconomics. So, the assumption here is that MPC is uh, between 0 and 1, which is a reasonable assumption to make because what we are saying is that as income increases, consumption also increases, but by less than the increase in income. Let us assume that equations 1 and 2 define y as a differentiable function of i, which is investment. And uh, what you have to do is uh, find an expression for dy by di. Now, what we can do here is to find dy by di, we can first actually, because these are two equations uh, here, so let us uh, simplify things a little bit and you can see that I can easily substitute for c in equation 1 and write equation 1 now as y equal to f of y plus i, right? So, I have just substituted for c and once I do that, I can differentiate both sides of this equation y equal to f of y plus i with respect to i because ultimately I want to calculate dy by di and this then gives me f prime of y dy by di plus 1, okay? Collecting the terms uh, containing dy by di, I will get 1 minus f prime of y times dy by di and that is equal to 1. So, that dy by di is equal to 1 divided by 1 minus f prime of y. So, it is uh, 1 divided by 1 minus the MPC. As you can see here, 
because uh, MPC f prime of y term is between 0 and 1. So, the denominator also will be between 0 and 1 right and that is to say that dy by di is going to be greater than 1. Now, this is a useful result because uh, if you look at what this result is telling us, this is saying that let us suppose uh, investment increases by 1 million rupees, then an increase in investment by uh, 1 million rupees will lead to an increase in income, national income by more than a million because dy upon di is more than 1. Right? So, uh, this is uh, something which is uh, uh, which lends itself to a very neat interpretation. Also, the larger is your marginal propensity to consume f prime of y, the larger is dy by di, right? The larger is f prime of y, that means the denominator will become smaller and uh, that will lead to a higher, uh, a larger multiplier effect which is to say uh, if we were to interpret this um, in simple words, this is basically saying that if your marginal propensity to consume is higher, that is to say that you are going to be consuming a higher proportion of the additional income that is generated. Now, if you are uh, if you are consuming a higher proportion of the income that will then lead to a positive effect on further production and spending and th that will then lead to a further increase in income. So, that will set up a cycle and that is why uh, the uh, larger MPC leads to a higher dy by di or a, a larger multiplier effect. Now, what I am going to do is because very often we calculate uh, uh, derivatives with the help of uh, total uh, differentials. So, I will introduce a concept of a differential now and we will uh, do the same example that we just did the macroeconomic uh, exam, uh, macroeconomics example with the help of total differentials. Okay. Now, to understand what we mean by the differential of a function, let us assume we have a function f of x which is a differentiable function. And let us assume dx represents an arbitrary change in the variable x. So, with f of x as a differentiable function and dx as a change as, a, some, uh, as the term representing a change in the variable x, what we call the differential of y is uh, dy or df that is then given by this expression f prime of x dx. Uh, 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 basically a cheat sheet here is because dy by dx is f prime of x. So, dy is equal to f prime of x dx, right? So, I will just uh, give you a graphical interpretation to this and it will become clearer. So, what we are calling the differential of y is denoted by dy or df and this is given by f prime of x times dx. Now, notice here that dy here is proportional to dx and in that sense this derivative f prime of x this can be interpreted as a factor it can, it can be interpreted as a factor of proportionality. Okay? But one thing that you must note here is that dy here is not the actual change in y the actual change in y as x uh, changes from x to d, uh, x plus dx is delta y. Now, let us look at this graphically this is uh, uh, function uh, y equal to f of x which is shown in blue and uh, we can see here that the movement on the curve is from p to q where x changes from x to x plus dx. Now, the actual change in y as a result of the movement from x to x plus dx is given by delta y which is nothing but q m right. So, when, when I move from p to q my uh, y changes by the height q m. Now, what I can do is basically that will be the slope of this uh, secant p q. Now, if I want to understand what d y is, let us consider this movement along the tangent p t, the tangent to the curve at p which is uh, p t and if I want to look at the slope of this tangent, see if you remember uh, the, the, uh, the slope of the tangent is nothing but the derivative right at that point. Now, uh, if you look at the slope of this tangent that is going to be nothing but dy by dx and the slope of the tangent pt is nothing but f prime of x. So, dy by dx here dy by dx the slope of the tangent pt we know that that is f prime of x. So, dy by dx is f prime of x and that is to say dy is equal to f prime of x dx. But this uh, is to say that your dy in the picture here is represented by the height tm. 
Now, you can clearly see here that the actual change in y is different from dy. But actually, if you notice, if I bring this q closer and closer to p, if I make this dx arbitrarily small, then I can get dy and delta y to converge, right. So, dy would then converge to delta y if uh, dx becomes arbitrarily small. But uh, to um, but the bottom line is that dy is equal to f prime of x dx. Now, let us uh, define d of something here as a differential of whatever is inside the parenthesis. So, let us look at how we calculate total differentials and uh, this then leads us to some rules for differentials that we must note down. Suppose I want the uh, change in uh, th this particular function a x to the power alpha, the total change in a x to the power alpha plus b, where a, b and alpha are constants. So, basically I am uh, having a situation here where f of x is equal to, so let f of x be equal to a x to the power alpha plus b and if I want to look at d of um, uh, y dy, so that is going to be f prime of x dx because that is uh, how I am defining dy, that is the total differential. So, dy would be equal to f prime of x dx, now f prime of x is what? Alpha a x to the power alpha minus 1, right? dx. So, similarly, if I have let us say a production function where output is function of uh, the capital deployed. So, here d f of k would be f prime of k dk. Let us look at some more rules for differentials. So, let us suppose f and g uh, are two differentiable functions, then d a f plus b g will then be uh, given by and here a b are constants a d uh, excuse me, I am uh, a times the uh, the expression d f plus b times d g, right. So, d of a f plus b g will be a times d f plus b times d g. Similarly, d of f g would be f uh, times d g plus g times d f applying the product rule and finally, d of f by g would be the total uh, differential of f by g would be g times d f minus f times d g divided by g squared and here we are assuming that g is not equal to 0. Let us see how uh, this method can be used to get our answers. So, I will uh, take some uh, equations that we had analyzed in the previous video. For example, if we have let us say x y equal to 5 and I want to find d y by d x. So, we had differentiated both sides of the equation earlier with respect to x, but we can also uh, find d y by d x using total differentials as you can see here. So, if I uh, totally differentiate both sides of this equation, I am going to get with the, the product rule, I am going to get x times dy plus y times dx is equal to 0 and this uh, then implies that dy by dx is equal to minus y by x. Similarly, suppose my equation is y squared equal to x times y plus 1, I can again differentiate both sides of uh, this equation to get 2 times y dy totally differentiated is equal to x times dy plus y times dx. Now, collecting the terms containing dy, I have 2y minus x, the whole thing times dy is equal to y dx and this then implies that dy by dx is equal to y divided by 2y minus x. Now, what I am going to do is let us go back to our uh, macroeconomic uh, model of uh, income determination for the closed economy and uh, just revisit this and find uh, the expression for dy by di using total differentials. So, in this particular example, we had uh, the equation because we had substituted for c into the first equation, our equation became y is equal to f of uh, y plus i and now if I uh, take total differentials, I am going to get dy is equal to f prime of y dy plus 1 and because I am interested in dy by uh, di, I am going to divide throughout by di and get dy by di is equal to f prime of uh, y dy by di plus 1 which is to say that dy by di is equal to uh, excuse me 1, uh, 1 upon 1 minus f prime of y right. So, this is uh, exactly the same result that we got earlier and we can use either method to 
find out dy by di or whichever derivative we have to calculate. Now, uh, let us extend things a little bit further and uh, let us suppose we are looking at a standard model of income determination for an open economy in an open economy framework. So, in this uh, particular problem you have y equal to c plus i plus x bar which is uh, x, x represents uh, exports here x uh, bar is an exogenous constant and m represents the volume of imports. So, we have y is equal to c plus i plus x bar minus m. The consumption function is given by f of y and as before the marginal propensity to consume is between 0 and 1, it is positive but less than 1 x bar is an exogenous constant whereas m denotes a volume of imports like I just told you and we will assume uh, m is given by g of y this function g of y and we will assume that g prime of y is positive which is to say that imports uh, go up whenever income uh, goes up right. Now uh, to simplify things uh, if I want to let us say calculate dy by di I can actually substitute for c and m in equation 1 and once I do that I am going to get y equal to f of y plus i plus x bar minus g of y right. So, again we can uh, differentiate both sides with respect to i and here uh, I am just differentiating both sides with respect to uh, i straight away. You can do it with total differentials but this is uh, good enough and uh, dy by di is uh, equal to f prime uh, of y dy by di plus 1 minus because x bar is an exogenous constant. So, uh, we will get a 0 here when I differentiate this with respect to i and then I am going to get minus g prime of y times dy by di right. This then implies that dy by di is equal to uh, let us collect the terms containing dy by di. So, I am going to get 1 uh, minus f prime of y plus g prime of y in the denominator and uh, in the numerator I have a 1. Now, uh, let us try and understand what uh, uh, what the sign of dy by di will be and uh, you can see here that because f prime of y is between 0 and 1. So, uh, just uh, give it some thought what would be the sign of dy by di here. See earlier we had got 1 upon 1 minus f prime of y but now we also have this g prime of y expression in the denominator. Because f prime of y is between 0 and 1, 1 minus f prime of y would also be between 0 and 1 right and g prime of y we are already assuming to be positive right. So, what we can say is that because in the denominator the entire expression 1 minus f prime of y even though it is less than 1 it is positive. So, you are adding a positive number to a positive number. So, the whole thing will become positive. So, which is to say that dy by di is going to be positive. So, this is how we have to use the method of implicit differentiation to uh, understand things in economics and uh, very often uh, these uh, results do lend themselves to uh, powerful interpretations. So, with this we conclude the second part of this particular lecture. Thank you very much.